All right, welcome to Good Choices, and I can say that with some confidence here. We're gonna do a um, we're gonna do a L pick video. That's definitely a good choice. Um, there's actually there's a really good channel that I do recommend people uh, check out, um, which is uh, Cloud. Uh, if you just type in like Cloud Engineering, you'll find it really fast um, because it's like it's really well optimized. So it's this one here. Uh, from what I understand, she's like actually a kind of like how Hank Preston and John Capobianco are uh, working for like S Cisco and like making network automation contents like she's does that for Microsoft. So this is this is a Microsoft employee that's trying to like make cloud adopted. So like, you know, that that's that's a big deal. Like. When's the last time there was a um, somebody doing this for like enterprise or data center networking? Like cloud is cloud matters a lot. Um, but anyways, um, here's here's uh, one of the uh, so one of the videos is in, and 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 let's check this out here. So this is a whole uh, guide for learn to cloud. So if you go to the guide here. Um, there's, a uh, yeah, so there's, there's a roadmap to becoming a cloud engineer and it's, it's like a, it's like a three year plan or something like that. Um, but the good news for me, I should be able to do it really fast. Um, cause I'm not starting from zero. Um, but I just want to make a point of, of showing, uh, something. So yeah, here it is. Here's, here it is. So, so it's, it's like a, it's like a three year plan. And, and this this is kind of, you know, I'm not a cloud developer for Microsoft that gets to make uh, YouTube videos in my home while getting paid for it. So like, I feel like there's there's a lot of things where like I, I got, like I did I did things wrong. And uh, this, this is why, uh, first of all, my certifications, you know, I just got my certifications and, and that's that. Um, you also need to do projects. Uh, you need to do a project, write a blog. I'm making this YouTube channel, so like I'm better in this regard. But um, um, not only do you need to get certifications, you need to get certifications that are relevant. And then the certification itself isn't enough. Um, you also need to do projects. So the self-taught framework for success is um, an associate cert, an associate project, and then a specialty cert and a specialty project. So projects are, are just as important and then um, building out that network too. So I, I'm not doing too bad for myself. Um, definitely not a, a beginner, um, but I do I do need to really get serious and and make bad, good decisions and stop making, stop kind of throwing my time away on things that really don't matter. So the reason I wanted to uh, bring this up um, is because at some point in this video, um, there's a list of things you need to uh, learn at some point, and then there are things uh, regarding uh, Linux, and uh, I was hoping I could find it uh, pretty easily, but it looks like uh, I can't uh, I can't find it. But anyways, the reason I wanted to bring it up is because if you look at uh, what this recommendation is, and then if you look at what the curriculum is for the for the LPIC and the stuff we've been learning so far in the series, it's it's like a one to one map. So I feel really good about that because um, this person here, who I think is deserving of, of a like and subscribe of, a, of of trust. I mean, this this is a Microsoft employee. Like, it's not like me, just some you know weirdo. It's it's like. Um, a weirdo who companies who isn't so weird that they have trouble working for companies. Um, so like this is, um, I think a great resource. I think, I think the, um, advice on here is really good. And I wish I could find that uh, thing that I'm looking for, but, um, I'm, I think I'm just going to have to give up on it and you'll have to take my word for it. I mean, just check out this channel on your own time and try to find, um, that video, um, on your own, uh, uh, there, sh there should be, oh, here we go. So here's phase one. 
yeah linux so so it should it should be um oh this is this is her like actually teaching some of the concepts but um and this is using microsoft well it's 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 a microsoft channel it's going to be all microsoft so like yeah you'll just have to take my word for it um yeah check out this channel great channel um great resources uh th and this is this is an actual this is not like me just some super weirdo that's like so weird that like then you know <laughs> this is somebody who is normal enough to uh be a cloud advocate at microsoft so so yeah listen to this person stop watching me right now go over watch this channel and uh get into cloud um but i'm going to keep working on the lpic uh because i think i could because as i said one of the things in this video in this uh person's channel that they say is uh you have to learn some things about linux and and they actually posted a a whole list of things you need to know on linux and i thought it was kind of uh funny or or, or I, I was really happy to see that it was basically the curriculum of the lpic so yeah check out that channel and uh let's uh keep going on uh, the LPIC spent, oh, I haven't made one in three days. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Um, all right. Okay. So, uh, yep, there we go. So this is, uh, 103.8 lesson one. So we're still, uh, GNU and Unix commands. Unix, Unix is not Linux and GNU is not Unix. <laughs> So uh, we're just learning about some of these basic fundamental commands. This isn't necessarily about Linux at this point. It's just about the precursors to Linux. But a lot of this stuff just carries over to whatever distribution of Linux you're using, be it Ubuntu, CentOS. Uh, I think Pop Pop Linux. I think yeah, Pop Pop OS is is like another common uh, distro that a lot of people like. Um, oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, a lot of people say they really like, uh, pop, um, Linux. Uh, so, um, yeah. Okay. So that's, that's one to check out, but, uh, let's continue on. So now we're going to learn about basic file editing. So that'll be probably things like nano and, and, uh, Vi. All right, so introduction. In most Linux distributions, VI, abbreviation for visual, and we'll do a mic check, mic check one, two, perfect, is pre-installed and it is the standard editor in the shell environment. VI is an interactive text editor. It shows the file content on the screen as it is being edited. As such, it allows the user to move through and make modifications anywhere in the document. However, unlike visual editors from the graphical desktop, the Vi editor is a shell application with keyboard shortcuts to every editing task. An alternative, alternative, <laughs> an alternative to Vi called Vim, which stands for uh, Vi, and then and then it has an M afterwards, which uh, apparently stands for improved, is uh, sometimes used as a modern replacement for Vi. I don't know why they couldn't call it V, like VII, but uh, Vim is, is is the the evolution of Vi. Among other improvements, Vim offers support for syntax highlighting, multi-level undo slash redo, and multi-document editing. Editing. Although more resourceful, Vim is fully backwards compatible with Vi, making both indistinguishable for most tasks. Um, okay, sorry, I gotta, I gotta change my positions here. All right, so the standard way to start Vi is to give it a path to a file as a parameter to jump directly, uh, hold on a second. All right, so to jump directly to a specific line, its number should be informed 
with a plus sign, as in vi plus nine slash etsy slash fstab file system table to open slash etsy slash fstab and place the cursor at the ninth line. Without the number, the plus sign by itself places the cursor at the last line. All right, so Vi's interface is very simple. All space available in the terminal window is occupied to present a file normally informed as a command argument to the user. The only visual cue clues are a footer line showing the current position of the cursor and a tilde indicating where the file ends. There are different execution modes for Vi where program behavior changes. The most common are insert mode and normal mode. And normal mode sometimes I call like command mode because that's where you issue like Vi commands. Insert mode is like the intuitive, like, uh, you know, where you where you actually type in text. It's like, you know, m most people like the thing is with Vi, which makes it kind of hard to use, is it starts in uh, normal mode and then you have to know the key to change it over to insert mode. The key is just I. But like, it makes it hard for people to get a hang of it because you're stuck in this mode to start where it's like I can't do anything intuitive in this mode until I hit I and then once I hit I I can't do anything that I would need to do in the normal mode like uh, save the document copy paste things um, jump lines uh, exit out of Vi that's the big one because you can't do it while you're in insert mode you have to switch over to normal mode and you use that with the escape key so yeah it's uh it's for it's it's definitely not uh, beginner friendly. Most people use Nano instead of Vi because Nano is uh, intended to be more beginner friendly. But I use Vi. I love it. All right. So insert mode. The insert mode is straightforward. Text appears on the screen as it is typed on the keyboard. It is the type of interaction most users expect from a text editor, but it is not how Vi first presents a document, mm -hmm, as I said. So to enter the insert mode, the user must execute an insertion command in normal mode. The escape key finishes the insert mode and returns to normal mode, the default Vi mode. So yeah, and it's okay. So this is probably more accurate than what I said. You just push I. So I is probably an insertion command. Um, there's probably other kinds of assertion commands as well. So you just need to enter an insertion command of any time to go from normal to insertion mode. And then the only way out of insertion mode is to hit the escape key. So note, if you are interested to know more on the other execution modes, Open Vi and type, oh, this is great. So help vim slash mode slash intro. Let's do that. I've, I've actually never done that. All right. Oh, well, we have to go into Vi. Oh, and it looks like one thing that's kind of cool about my distribution is Vi is, uh, is hot keyed to Vim. So we automatically do uh, Vim when we do Vi. So let's do Vim modes intro. Oops, I spelled that incorrectly. So help Vim modes intro. All right, there we go. So we've got so we've got like a t built-in tutorial. So we have we have seven basic modes. Wow. So we have normal mode. You can enter all the normal uh, editor commands. Um, if you start the editor, you are in this mode unless you set the uh, insert mode option. 
visual mode is one. Um, so the movement commands extend a highlighted area when a non-movement command is used. It is executed for the high high level area. How do I see? Oh, here's the rest. Then we've got select mode. Um, we've got insert mode, which is the one that's like intuitive. This is where you like actually type into it. And we've got command line mode, uh, EX mode, and uh, terminal job mode. So I'm not going to read all of them. It looks like in addition to the seven modes, there's another seven modes. <laughs> um, which are variations of, of the notes. But yeah, let's, um, I'm not going to read. So here, here's the first lesson in Vi. Uh, first of all, I think we need to, so you ju we just hit uh, the escape key, then the uh, colon character, and we can see we've got it jumping down there. Q, and uh, that's how you quit from that. Um, so we got to do it again to quit Vi itself. So <laughs> quitting Vi is uh, kind of a meme for it, it being difficult. All right, so normal mode. Normal mode, also known as command mode, is how Vi starts by default. In this mode, keyboard keys are associated with commands for navigation and text manipulation tasks. Most commands in this mode are unique keys. Some of the keys and their functions on normal mode are uh, the zero key or the uh, this, which is go to the beginning and end of the line. Uh, then we've got uh, one capital G or just G, which is go to the beginning and end of the document. We can we can do these. Let's let's do these in the lab. So I think I've got, um, I think I've got some kind of uh, file. Oh yeah, if we go to Romeo and Juliet, I'm sure there's, yeah yeah. So we're we'll going to PG. There we go. So that's that's we got the whole Romeo and Juliet in here. All right, so let's do these uh, in normal mode. I'll push escape to make sure I'm there. And then uh, we're gonna start with uh, uh, zero and hit enter. All right, and that didn't do anything. Um, let's try the, uh, nope, that didn't do anything either. Maybe you have to go, okay, so so they're, they're being kind of, so, so here, normal mode, also known as command mode, is how Vi starts by default. In this mode, keyboard keys are associated with commands for navigation and text manipulation tasks. Most commands in this mode are unique keys. Some of the keys and their functions in, on normal mode are. So they're not being clear here. Um, I think um, because we can see if you want to um, execute something, you have to, sorry. <laughs> you have to hit the colon first. Um, so I think I think these are technically colon zero, colon dollar sign. Let me try it. Okay, so if I do colon dollar sign, uh, yeah, so, so these are beginning and then that's end. So with, uh, with colon zero, if I just hit zero, it, it doesn't do anything. But if I hit colon zero, I skip to the end. And if I hit colon uh, dollar sign, uh, sorry, I skip to the beginning. And if I hit uh, colon dollar sign, I skip to the end. All right, so the next one is, uh, uh, that, that's the line. So now this is, this is the document. So let's try that. 1G, see how that's different. So we've got an ambiguous, uh, ambiguous user defined command. Let's do let's do one G without that. Okay, there we go. So now we don't need to use the um, the colon uh, if we do a, a G. Okay, so so that's good because because it's the document uh, we don't have to use the colon. And we can see uh, it changed down here where we're at. And I do have to use the capital, otherwise it doesn't work. All right, so now uh, we've got our cursor right here. Um, so to go to the beginning and the end of the sentence, uh, we use uh, those characters. So close print. Jumps me down to the next page. Let's do that a few more times. 
there we go and, and notice how it uh, kind of puts me in a strange error a strange area there it's because it takes me to the beginning and the end of the sentence and we can see this sentence this here is one sentence ends with a period so uh, three two one where's it gonna end up here well the answer I would pick is it would end up there let's see what happens and there we go yep so and then the next one there so uh, yeah and then and then you can move backwards when it comes to actual sentences there we go so we end up there we end up there uh, there we go so the next one is go to the beginning and end of the paragraph so I would think that it would end up here but let's see uh, what happens ah there we go I was correct now what happens here this is kind of interesting okay so it just kind of goes a paragraph is kind of defined as text separated by spaces cool this one's actually pretty useful I think all right so uh, then W is is word jump and uh, you can also uh, word so jump word and jump word including punctuation so let's jump through these uh, words here um, so enter the chorus and the chorus will say two households both alike in dignity in fair Verona um, so move the cursor now to to that part yep in fair Verona and I'll, I'll read it as I move where we, we lay our scene from ancient grudge break to new mutiny and notice how it uh, does it before the uh, punctuation so now let's hold down um, shift and do it with uh, a capital where civil blood makes civil hands unclean and see how now we we ended up after the punctuation because we we're using a capital uh, W so let's keep using that capital W from forth the fatal loins of these two foes a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life whose and we'll switch to the lowercase now see how that's different misadventured and see see so the uppercase is kind of what you want because like you know this is all one word uh Pytus overthrows doth with their death bury their parents and then we can see uh, I'm using the lowercase so we're kind of not you, you will probably want to use the uppercase most of the time unless you're like editing something if you want to edit the punctuation and the lowercase is better because that puts you you can hit the delete key um, if, I, if I hit I right now and go in insert mode um, and then I hit the delete key I can delete that so let's add that back in there um, and then go back into normal mode and then we'll we'll finish uh, doing this with a capital W so strife The fearful passage of their death marked love and the continuance of their parents rage which but their children's end not could remove is now the two hours traffic of our stage the which if you with patient ears attend what here shall miss our toil shall strive to mend there we go so the next one is uh we can move the cursor uh left up right and down so let's do that um so to move it to the left is with an h to move it to the right is with an l and now here's where it gets tricky it's hard to remember which is up and which is down um i guess you can tr see the thing is if you like think of it like a compass like it, it would be left like it would be uh, west, north, east, and west. I think that's why I always get confused about this. Um, if it were left, up, down, right, um, I, I think I would be less confused. Or, or if it were like left, up, right, down, that would be even less confusing because it'd be like a compass. But this just seems almost like random to me. Um, so you can move it left, you can move it right, and then and then your uh, ring finger I guess you can think of like I don't know how to remember it it's hard to remember what the middle two are um, so 
yeah, it's hard to remember what the middle two are. I think the um, I'm trying to think of how you can remember it. No, nah, I think there's no. Way. I guess I guess here no. It's like everything because I was thinking like, oh, you flip someone the bird, that means you put your middle finger up. But like that's why this is such a bad scheme in my opinion because this this is your middle finger is what makes it go down not up so like i can never get this right because i always think that this is up and this is down so i guess that's a way i could i could remember it is just it's not intuitive it's like the opposite of what i would like is what it is which is probably not that hard to remember so if i want to go up what i'd like to do is hit this key but it takes it down so I can remember um, the difference between up and down that way. All right, so the next one is uh, lowercase or uppercase E, and that's to go to the end of the current word. So uh, let's do a lowercase E. Um, okay, and we see something interesting here. It's, it's not going to the end of the word. It's just kind of going in between the words. Um, let's try an uppercase E and see what happens. Okay, so uppercase E, uh, it looks like when it comes to punctuation, it places us before the punctuation mark. Same thing with lowercase E. Yeah, I'm not really sure what what the deal is with this because it's not really, it's not really doing that uh, too well. Uh, let's keep reading this because, you know, this, this is actually like really good. So scene one, we're in a public place somewhere, maybe a, shopping mall or a public library or some kind of town uh, center, maybe like a public bathroom in a park. Let's go with that. So enter Samson and Gregory armed with swords and bucklers. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, I think, the public place that uh, was being imagined. Um, so let's go do an E to go to the end of these words. All right. And this is Samson Gregory on my word will not carry coals um okay now let's do a capital e okay and then here's gregory no for then we should be uh colliers and uh let's try to remember what the what the good one was uh f according to my recollection without looking at the the materials it's a capital w yep so that's it so for then we should be colliers and Samson says, I mean, if we be in, and if I do a lowercase w, collier, uh, then I go behind the punctuation, and that can be tricky here, will draw. And then Gregory says, I, while you live, draw your neck out the collar. And then Samson says, I strike uh, quickly, being moved. Now, now the other thing we could do is read the whole sentence and use uh, a capital G. Oh, so, sorry. No, that's not right. Uh, oh, I totally messed that up. Um, okay, here we go. This, this brings us to the front. Um, so then... Um, Okay, so actually, actually, what I meant was um, the uh, open close parentheses. So, so instead, we could do um, oh to jump to the end of the line is what I wanted to do. Oh, okay. So this is how we do that. We do that with a, a zero. Uh, yep. Or a or a um, uh, yeah. So we we can do it like this. So I, while you live, draw your neck out the collar and then jump to the end of the line. Move down. Samson, uh, move to the beginning of the line. I strike quickly, being moved. Okay, to the end of the line. And then Gregory, uh, beginning of the line. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. All right. So uh, there we go. And then uh, now, now the next thing we can do is is we can search. We can search forward or backwards. So let's search for um, this word, uh, colliers. Okay, so th so there's one. Um, let's search for it uh, going backwards. There we go. Now we see now we see the one uh, that we saw on the screen before. I think I think um, so. The prior line was 
will not carry coals. Let's see if that. Yeah, so I think I think the reason it skipped down is it, it looped back through the front. Um, we, we don't have any other instance of that word except for where we saw it there. There we go. All right, so the next one is I or capital I. So this is enter the insert mode before the current cursor, cur, cursor, sorry, I need, I need a break. I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I'm feeling a lot better. Let's keep going. So, uh, so we went, we went with the, um, yep. So I is, is let's, let's do, let's do I next. So, uh, if we hit a, hit a enter a few times. We can see that moves the cursor down. Uh, let's hit uh, lowercase i. There you go, and then we'll just mash the keyboard a bit. A, B, A, S, D, F, classic. Yep, okay, so then we'll go back to normal mode and we'll hit uh, capital I, A, S, D, F. Okay, so it looks like the same uh, thing happened. Um, let's try it again with the cursor in a different place. Let's try it right, before, right in the middle of this word here, art. So we'll do a lowercase, uh, lowercase uh, i. There we go. Now we're in the middle of the word. Go back to normal mode. Now we'll do uh, we'll do a uppercase I with the cursor in the same spot. And now we're in insert mode, but we're in insert mode at the beginning of the line. So that's what the uppercase does. It puts you in insert mode with the cursor at the beginning of the line. All right. So the next one is lower and uppercase A. So uppercase A um, enters the insert mode after the current uh, cursor position and at the end of the current line. So just like just like we could use a uppercase I to switch into insert mode with our cursor at the beginning of the line, instead we can use an uppercase A to switch into insert mode with our cursor at the end of the line. So the lowercase, what it does is if we were to do a lowercase A here, now we can see that the cursor is uh, after the E, if we were to do an I, it remains before it. So when you go into insert mode by pressing I, it does not alter the uh, position of your cursor, which can be kind of annoying. It, it can be sometimes like how, not how you want it to be. So it's like, for example, like, you know, I can't move to the very end of this line here um, because presumably because of the, character after the um, dot doesn't allow it. So so actually this is nice because previously I thought you could only do I, so now you have to do I and then arrow over to it. But actually what you can do is you can do A and then it automatically puts you at the end. So A is probably a better way to go from normal mode to insert mode than I is. Uh, so hopefully I can remember to do that. <laughs> and then if you, if you just wanna do at the end of the line, then you just hit that capital A and now you're in insert mo mode at the end of the line. And uh, capital I goes to the beginning, um, but the one that would probably be using the most is uh, A because it it kind of intuitively does what you want to do. All right, so the next one is an upper and a lower case O. So this is to add a new line and enter the insert mode in the uh, next line or in the previous line. Okay, so we, let's say uh, we wanna add a stage direction for Samson here. So we position our, our cursor here and we could do that with the uh, with the, the letter keys. Uh, oh, uh, uh, oops, I'm in, I'm in insert mode now. Um, okay, there we go. So here, here we go. Um, now we're doing that. See, see what I, I like the arrow keys so much better. They're like, I already, I made a mistake. I tried to go down and hit the wrong one. I just really don't like these keys, th this combination of keys for, like if it was like a compass, north, south, north, uh, like east, north, sorry, west, north, east, and south, like that would make sense, but it's, it's just kind of random and it's hard to remember the random order. Um, okay. So let's, let's, uh, go. I do bite thy thumb, sir. I don't know what that means. So let's go uh, before that one. And then, um, let's add a, uh, stage direction by going to, uh, insert mode in the previous line. So we can do a, uh, shift O for uppercase O. There we go. 
And now we're in insert mode, as we can see in the bottom. So we can say, uh, bite your thumb is our uh, stage direction. Um, but we don't want that. So so that's that's if we're if we're down here. If we go to normal mode, we can do a uh, uppercase uh, O, and we can go here and put that stage direction in. Um, likewise, what we could do instead of uh, starting the cursor down there, we can start it up here and then do a lowercase O. And now uh, we end up on that same line, but we went uh, down one line to get there instead of up. All right, so that brings us to the next one, which is S, uh, lowercase and uppercase. We kind of guess, you know, there's a, there's a pattern here. What does the lowercase do? What does the uppercase do? So I would guess that the uh, lowercase goes to the left or to uh, down, and the lowercase does something with your cursor that occurs up or to the right. So here it is. It's erase the character under the cursor. I don't know what under means. Or the entire line and enter the insert mode. Okay, so if we were if we were to go here, let's let's go down to this uh, this here. Let's let's erase the law. Let's try to fight the law and um, see if the law will win. So the law I think is under the cursor. So let's hit S. Uh, there we go. So now we're in insert mode and and we got rid of this uh, character. So we'll add it back and and, uh, and leave. Uh, let, let's let's erase this because it's just a lot to to add. So um, Let's do that again. S, okay, so it'll, it'll erase what's in front of the course cursor, so we'll add it back. Let's do it here, S, there we go. So it, so it erases what's in front of the cursor. Um, and then if we hit uh, capital S, we erase the entire line, so we'll add that back. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Self the next one is uh, change the character or characters under the cursor. I'm not sure how you can have more than one. Um, let's uh, put it right here and we're going to hit uh, C for change. And then uh, we'll change it to an E. Uh, all right, well, well, that didn't that didn't work the way I expected. Um, Let's do. Let's try this with me. So we're gonna do. Uh, we did a C, and then we'll do M E. Uh, okay, that didn't work either. Uh, can I do like a Control Z? Okay. Well, now I'm confused because I I missed. I see. See, I don't. I don't like working this. Like I I missed everything. Um. So hopefully we'll be able to redo this because this is we're really messing things up here. It looks like C just uh, deletes everything. Yeah, it looks like if you hit C, it just it just erases the line. Uh, but if I say like C to E, yeah, it looks like C primarily functions as like race, erasing the line, or at least that's the only way I know how to use it. Yeah, so C, I'm not sure what this means. Change the characters under the cursor. How, what is, I don't understand. And by under, they mean to the right of, I think. But you can see a C pops up here. Um, so, yeah, it just kind of deletes it. I don't know what they mean by change. So then, then the next one is R, so replace. So let's try that. We're going to replace this I with a O. Okay, so that that kind of makes more sense. Um, that's what I thought C did, uh, but I guess that's what R does. Uh, C just uh, puts you into uh, yeah. C puts you into uh, it. Kind of does the same thing as S. It looks like, which is which I'm surprised by. Um, so if we, if we put it if we put it in the center here, and we do a uppercase S. It'll put us into insert mode and remove that whole line. Um, if we put it in the middle here and we do just a C and then enter, then it will do the same thing. So it looks like it does the same thing. I don't know if I'm missing something here, but um, all right. So moving on to X, X is delete the selected characters. 
I wonder if we can do like a C and then like now C just she just deletes things um, yeah I don't know what's going on with C so X is delete the selected characters or the character under the cursor so if we do a capital X and then uh, select the character somehow uh, I don't know how we select characters uh, yeah okay X X is another one I'm not I'm not so sure that's okay let's just move on so V uh, so lowercase and uppercase so start a new selection with the current character or the entire line so let's try that so here either three or four citizens with clubs we're gonna start a new selection so new lowercase v there we go and now we're in visual mode so uh there we go so now now we're selecting um so uh so let's put, let's hit uh v again we just want to get out of there there we go and now let's start uh let's do a capital v and there we go now we've got the whole line all right so the next one is y so copy yanks the characters or the entire line so if we just do a uh uh, we'll get back in the normal mode and then we'll hit a Y so Y doesn't work I wonder if that C is meant to be in a different mode because we can see if we hit V now we're in visual mode and now these things like uh, yanking make sense because if we hit if we hit Y uh, we can see it, it probably uh, worked and then we can hit uh, P and see how that works it, it's a copy and paste and you can do that um, you can do that in uh, whatever mode you would like um, you can just keep pasting it but the thing is to copy it um, you, you hit uh, Y and it's, it's just there's no you know you have to you have to move to visual mode and you have to you have to copy it um, and then and then you can do you can do uh, uh, YY get the whole line and uh, we can see even though I didn't yeah so we can see I, I have the whole line there so if I if I go into visual mode, and then don't don't highlight the whole line, I hit Y Y. Then uh, I can come down and do a P, and look at this, we got the whole line uh, there. If I do it without uh, the whole line, w without hitting uh, Y twice, then I go down uh, here and hit P. We only uh, paste it in partial the line. Okay, so that's. Um, pasting in the the copied content either after or before the current position so uh, let's uh, let's uh, paste it in before the current position here there we go and now let's uh, paste it in after the current position here uh, there we go so we pasted it uh, with the period there um, so let's let's try it here again we're gonna paste it uh, uh, we're gonna paste it before with uppercase P there we go and now the period ends up over here and then we'll paste it uh, after here with uh, lowercase p there we go and the period is back there all right so then u is a good one that un undoes the uh, last action it looks like we can undo everything which is great we can we can actually clean this up and set it back to normal which i kind of want to do i, I kind of want to have this to be um unaltered so this is great and it looks like the undo goes all the way back to like all the changes you made yeah I love it okay great yeah we can just hold it down there we go all the way at the oldest change we, we undid everything so then uh, control R that's the redo that's a good one and it looks like it saves it saves everything so undo redo what more could you ask for um, then the next one is close and save which is easy uh, and then and then there's a close but do not save as well. Let's do the ZZ so it'll close it. And we got so we're gonna need to open it again. And then we'll do a uh, cap, capital Z capital Q um, to close but not save. So actually I didn't know this and this is really cool. Um, so I thought really the only way to quit Vi was to do an escape then do a colon, then do a Q, but it's actually a lot easier to quit VA. You just do a uh, capital ZZ, and then um, 
you've not only closed out of the file, but you've also saved it. Uh, and if you don't want to save it, you just do capital ZQ. It's a lot easier than I thought. All right, so if preceded by a number, the command will be executed the same number of times. For example, press Y, uh, press 3YY to copy the current line plus the following two. Press D5W to delete the current word and the following four words, and so on. Most editing tasks are combinations of multiple commands. For example, the key sequence VEY is used to copy a selection starting at the current position and still till the end of the current word. Command repetition can also be used in combinations. So V3 EY would copy a selection starting at the current position until the end of the third word from there. VI can, or V, whatever you want to call it, I call it VI, can organize <clears throat> copied text in registers, allowing to keep distinct contents at the same time. A register is specified by a character preceded by um, this uh, this quote here and once created it's kept until the end of the current session the key sequence quote ly creates a register containing the current selection which will be accessible through the key l then the register l may be pasted with uh, quote lp there is also a way to set custom marks at arbitrary positions along the text, making it easier to quickly jump between them. Marks are created by pressing the key M and then a key to address the current position. With that done, the cursor will come back to the marked position when quote uh, followed by the chosen key R pressed. Any key sequence can be recorded as a macro for future execution. A macro can be recorded, for example, to surround a selected text in double quotes. First, a string of text is selected and the key Q is pressed, followed by a register key to associate the macro with, like D. The line recording um, at D will appear in the footer line, indicating that the recording is on. It is assumed that some text is already selected, so the first command, I don't know, mic check, mic check one, two, uh, is X to remove and automatically copy the selected text. The key I is pressed to insert two double quotes at the current position, then escape returns to normal mode. The last command is capital P to reinsert the deleted selection just before the last double quote. Pressing Q again will end the recording. Now a macro consisting of a key su sequence, X, I, open, close, quote, escape, and capital P, will execute every time keys at D are pressed in normal mode, where D is the register key associated with the macro. However, the macro will be available only during the current section session. To make macros persistent, they should be stored in the configuration file. As most modern distributions use Vim and the Vi as the Vi compatible editor, the user's configuration file is uh, home forward slash dot vimrc dot inside home forward slash dot uh, vimrc the line uh, let and then and then here's the macro we defined we'll set the register d to the key sequence inside single quotes the same register previously assigned to a macro can be used to paste its key sequence all right so i think i want to cut it there what do we got here nearly at an hour i don't know i just feel like i need a break um and i feel like you know this is a lot of like hands-on so yeah i'm just going to take a break and then or i'm just going to cut it and then we'll come back and do do the colon commands in part two so
I just I just need it to be a little bit shorter. Okay, so here we go. Yep, that looks good to me. Um, so then the next, yeah, so that that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.